For this episode of my EV Buyer's Guide, let's talk about charging. The first thing we need to do is get some terminology out of the way. This thing that I'm holding right here in my hand is a charging cable, and this end is an EVSE, or Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. This is not a charger, because the charger in modern EVs is actually built into the vehicle itself. This terminology applies to basically everything you plug your electric vehicle into, so level one charging stations like this that usually come with the vehicle, or level two charging stations that you'll find at home, installed in your garage, or in businesses, parking lots, that sort of thing. The connector at the end is a J1772 connector. It is an industry standard in North America, and it supplies AC power up to 240 volts. That's why there are three pins right here, because those are required for 240 volts. These two outer pins right here that are smaller are basically for signaling. It's important to keep in mind that the charger is in the vehicle, because the vehicle's charger determines the charging speed, not necessarily the plug you're plugging it into, unless you're plugging it into that 120 volt cord that I've been using. That means that if you have a first generation LEAF, for instance, with a 3.3 kilowatt onboard charger, even if you plug it into a high capacity 7 or 10 kilowatt J1772 connector, it will only charge at 3.3 kilowatts because that's the charger that's built into the vehicle. EV charging has evolved rapidly, even though that LEAF was only launched a few years ago. It came out with a 3.3 kilowatt hour charger, and now the new vehicles that we're seeing like this and the BMW i3 are up to 7.2 kilowatts. The difference in charging times is pretty major. A 3.3 kilowatt hour charger will give you approximately 13 to 15 miles for every hour of charging. You'll double that approximately for a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour charger, and this vehicle can give you about 35 miles for one hour of charging. Yet again, Teslas are a little bit different because of the size of the vehicle and the mission of the vehicle. It's a much sportier vehicle and it's not quite as efficient, but it has a bigger battery pack for longer range. That means we have faster chargers. You can get 10 or 20 kilowatt chargers in those Tesla models. Charging obviously costs money, so if you're gonna be charging your vehicle at home, you should contact your utility company and find out if they have special EV rate plans available. Frequently, those will discount the charging, especially off-peak, but it really depends on your utility company. Even if your utility doesn't have a special EV plan, you should look at a time of use plan that generally discounts the rates after a time of day like 6 p.m. or 9 p.m. That way you can use these vehicles onboard charging timers and have it start the charging when your electric rate drops. Depending on the rate plans, the area of the country and, and your utility company, you can get those per kilowatt hour rates down to eight to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Now if you're gonna be public charging the vehicle, you'll pay an awful lot more for that things can range up to 60 cents a kilowatt hour, depending on the charger you're using. In general, the slower the public charger, the lower the rate will be. So if you're charging at a level two station out there that's a 3.3 kilowatt hour station in this area, they tend to be a little bit lower than the faster stations, and they're definitely lower than a DC fast charge station. So what's a DC fast charger? Well, remember that I said the charger is completely on board the vehicle. That's true if you're charging from 120 or 240 volts AC. But if you go to a DC fast charge station, it's more of a collaborative effort between the charging station and the vehicle. And that's because at higher rates of charge, it's just not efficient to put an inverter that big inside this vehicle. And those fast charge stations right now in the US are charging at around 50 kilowatts, which is significantly faster than the onboard charger here. Using one of those fast DC quick charge stations, you can take this battery from approximately zero to 80% in around 30 minutes. And that goes for the vast majority of EVs out there. An important consideration with DC quick charging is that there are three basic quick charge standards. This e-golf we're taking a look at here has the new SAE combo connector. It uses a plug that looks very similar to this, but obviously has two additional connectors right down there for the DC quick charge portion. This is kind of a VHS versus Betamax problem because right now there are three different DC fast charge standards in the United States. There's Chatamo, there's this DC combo connector also called CCS or the combined charging system, as well as the Tesla supercharger network. Chatamo is the original and there are over 900 stations at this point in time in the United States. Vehicles that can charge from these stations include the Nissan Leaf, the Mitsubishi iMeV, as well as the brand new Kia Soul EV. There are also some at your own risk conversions for the second generation RAV4 EV, as well as the Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric. There is also an available adapter for the Tesla Model S to allow it to use Chatamo stations because the signaling is largely compatible. You should know if you plug your Tesla Model S into a Chatamo station, it's not gonna charge as quickly as it would at a Tesla supercharger station. The SAE combo plug, also known as CCS, is used in the i3, the Volkswagen e-Golf, as well as the GM Spark EV. 
Lastly, of course, we have the Tesla, and that is very different because it can only be used with one brand, Tesla, largely enough. It charges faster than the other at the moment, but again, those vehicles can accept CHAdeMO singling, so you can use CHAdeMO stations with an adapter. The important thing to know about fast charging a battery is that the charging ability of the battery, and that is the ability of the battery to actually accept more charge, slows down around 80% or so. That means that the first 80% of the battery will take generally about as long as the last 20% of the battery to charge. So while many of the EVs currently out on the market will go from 0 to 80% in 30 minutes, it may take an additional 30 minutes to go from 80 to 100%. Charging with that first crop of EVs we saw back in 2012 definitely took some planning, but that's very different with this latest crop of EVs out. Going 30 miles on a one hour charge versus 10 to 15 miles is an enormous difference. and It makes these an awful lot easier to integrate into your lifestyle. This is also why you should overbuy when it comes to your home charging stations, if it's possible. If you bought that first generation Nissan Leaf back in 2012 with its 3.3 kilowatt onboard charger, and you bought an EVSC at home that was only a 3.3 kilowatt EVSC, and you bought a vehicle like this, it would definitely slow down your charging time. If, however, you future planned and you bought a 10 kilowatt home charger, then you'd be able to plug this vehicle in without a problem and charge at its maximum rate. You'd also be able to plug your Tesla in onto that home charging station and charge at its maximum rate if you got the single charger in that Tesla. Fortunately, home installed level two EVSEs are definitely below $1,000, even including installation in some cases. So you should definitely take a look at possibly a 10 kilowatt charger if you're gonna install one today. It is possible to go larger than that, and if you have the budget, you might as well.